Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today we're going to finally be doing a first impressions video on the Falco and now it is going to be a different type of video not the usual kind of first ride review video because I don't think it fits I've already done too much mileage on this I have about two and a half thousand kilometers on it so it is very much um, a, a different style shall we say and I'm also going to be talking about obviously how all the changes I've made to this have kind of affected it but first and foremost let's get in the road let's get this lovely lovely bike started uh, we will be going one of my favorite routes today out to Kells but yeah we're going to one of my favorite routes out in Kells and let's start it beautiful beautiful now a lot of people kind of have been interested to hear the usual stuff that I do talk about so I will be talking about that usual stuff in this just it's just a different format uh, like I said just didn't didn't really fit with you know the, the usual style of videos I do I suppose um, so a quick bit of background on this Aprilia Falco uh, or SL1000 SL um, I bought this in Germany in February I think and I rode it back 1800 kilometers what are you doing I rode it back 1800 kilometers uh, to Ireland through the UK and met up with a few people along the way so this bike does uh, already mean quite a lot to me it has had an effect on my life I enjoy it a lot <laughs> um, and that's kind of where it started out it also if you haven't seen the video where I you know I kind of half jokingly said it tried to kill me I'll leave a link to that up there in the corner and uh, you can have a look at that if you have any interest as well and what we're going to be talking about today is the comfort power and torque suspension and handling and also we're going to talk about um, obviously the looks of the bike and uh, you know any extras and anything else I think is worth mentioning so again just a quick thing as well I know I'm saying quick things but none of these are quick uh, if you haven't been here before this is how my videos go um, what changes have I made to this so far so I have I've rebuilt the brake calipers um, I have new HEL braided brake lines on the front and rear I have a new HEL braided brake line uh, braided clutch line and an Oberon slave cylinder uh, for the clutch too I've also put on new EBC discs front and back a uh, new chain and sprockets and I have a 44 tooth sprocket on the rear as of today uh, instead of a, the stock 41 which makes a, a lovely difference to the power and torque in fairness and yeah other than that um, it's uh, other than that I say uh, it's, it's stock so other than all of those things it's stock and it has 45,000 45 and a half thousand kilometers nearly on it now as well so it's still running sweet like a mouse's heart what I want to talk about first is the comfort so this bike um, when we get off and have a walk around you'll see it's 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 a quite a sporty sports tour uh, setup wise it's not it is very much not like a angle towards comfort <laughs> but that said you know the fact I can sit up like this um, when I'm just kind of cruising makes a huge difference to the comfort of the bike and it's why I was able to come the whole way back from Germany uh, without being completely crippled I think Also, to put it out there, I am six foot seven or 200 centimeters tall, and at the moment I weigh around about 128 kg, or I'm about 20 stone, or about I think 280 pounds or something like that, right? So this is very much a, a taller person uh, review of the bike. I have to say, it's 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 not comfortable, right? We'll get that out there at the very start, but it's also not uncomfortable. I've already done about 150 kilometers on this today and you know I'm still able to just sit up on it and do more it's, it's not a problem and um, it did become uncomfortable during the trip back at around about 500 kilometers per day and uh, that's where it started to kind of just get a little bit tight around my hips and whatnot um, but other than that it was it was perfectly perfectly manageable I think the max distance I did in one day was 800 kilometers and I will not lie to you that was tough uh, but I think that would have been tough for me on a lot of pretty much all bikes due to my size One thing that I will say is the reach to the bars for a taller person is actually really really nice um, You know because they're kind of far away so for a shorter individual um, And I know hippo drones did ride this bike and did comment upon that that the reach to the bars is a lot uh, But for the taller person, it's actually quite nice. It just gives us that space uh, that we otherwise would not have 
but other than that you know like the usual the layout of the the controls and whatnot um the clutch we'll talk about the clutch in a second actually you know the controls are all really easy to reach both the indicators the lights full lights uh, over here the start button and obviously the kill switch everything is absolutely fine and everything is stock um the brake lever easy to press and uh the foot controls while being high up they don't they don't have my hips at the same extreme angle as say my jigsaw does uh, I also own a 1996 Jixxer 750. You know, and obviously, look, the view and everything else is absolutely lovely on this bike. So, re really and truly, uh, if I was to give it a comfort rating, it would probably have to be 6.5 out of 10 if you made me put a number on it. Um, but it's also not uncomfortable. It's it's very, very manageable if you are a taller person and want a kind of a sports tourery bike. Um, this is that. Uh, now the, the stock mirrors from a comfort perspective, they, they work, you do kind of have to move to use them, but they're actually, they're not too bouncy and um, very, very visible, so, you know, they're, they're, they're actually, they're nice, you know, they're nice, so, uh, from a perspective of a lot of bikes I've ridden where a lot of them are useless, uh, these ones aren't bad, and I do think that kind of is a, is a thing of, of, you know, the, the late 90s, early 2000s, is well the mirrors to a lot of people were not so good looking and um, we'll get to that later i think these ones are very good looking a lot of them were actually quite functional if you just moved your elbows as a larger person obviously as a smaller person you wouldn't have the same issue so you know there, there is that and that's kind of comfort you know it is it is a comfortable bike but not the most comfortable a power and torque um it has plenty of it as you can see this bike comes in with around about 118 brake horsepower. Uh, I'll put the RPMs, I forget exactly where the max is uh, on the screen. And about 96 newton meters of torque as well. So it's it's actually not as torquey as you might expect from a big twin. Uh, this being a 998cc V-twin. It's also a 60 degree V-twin. So it does have balancer shafts. It's not the same as a 90 degree V-twin, which is would be the more common uh, V-twins out there. But the thing is that I like about this bike and the power and the torque that are there is it's so usable. So like, I'm not sure what gear we're in. But it just pulls like an absolute demon. So much so that my 360 cam is angled backwards a bit. So I'll have to pull in and fix that. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's what I really, really love about this bike is that it does have, you know, that flexibility. Ugh. Uh, it's okay where it is for now but you know it's such a usable power around corners and everything so nice now i will say uh in the stock configuration so the the 16 sprocket front tooth and the 41 rear i have 1644 now um in the stock configuration to be honest three gears are kind of all you use even when i was on the motorway up and down to work and um, the max gear i'd kind of use because it's where the engine felt happy uh, was fifth sixth gear was absolutely pointless since the sprocket chain sixth gear is usable it's at a re reasonable rev range for for fuel economy and all that crack on the motorway and you know uh you just you just get more of the power in a usable range i think especially in ireland i don't know where, where you're from but in ireland it's definitely in a usable comfortable range so i i personally like that quite a lot um you know that that change of, of gearing which makes a big difference to the bike uh, even down low so like I'm in first gear now and when you're in first gear through a town like this with the uh, stock gearing the bike can be quite unhappy but now you can click it into second and second 40 kilometers an hour just ticks away fine so power and torque it look it is not a super bike it's not unbelievably fast but it is plenty quick where are you going it is apps it's plenty quick and it's very nice to use uh, on the road. It's um, it's it's a comfortable, it's a comfortable balance of power, I'll say. And there's Kells. This is I love that road out. There's just a nice few twisties in it. But we'll we'll turn around now and we'll go back the way to cover the rest of the video. It's just I uh, this is just a road I like. I like coming out to um, just to have a look, really, more so than anything else. Because a big old a big old priory like that with those huge walls. It's not something you get to see every day. I could see it every day, actually, but I, I choose not to most of the time because too much of a good thing and all that. 
The other thing about the engine on this bike is the, uh, the engine braking is a lot. And it's actually quite nice when you're out in the road and just, you know, tipping around. The engine braking phew, makes it makes it very, very good for when you're just doing, um, you know, running through fast corners. Instead of touching the brakes, you can just ease off the throttle a bit and the bike will slow you down. Now, I'll just do a quick brake test down here. Down a hill. 80 kilometers an hour. Down to about 50. It stops very good. Now, the thing about it is stock, this comes with Brembo discs. We'll do another one here. So from a bit faster. Ew. And we're down to 50, you know, less than 50. It, it works. The brakes work really, really well. Now, obviously, if you're someone who likes to have, you know, your ABS, uh, this doesn't have it. Uh, if you're like some, someone who likes to have linked brakes, this doesn't have it. Um, if you're someone who likes, mm, you know, a gentle braking experience, I also would say that this doesn't have it. These brakes are like, you know, quite bitey even at slow speeds. Now, personally, I like that, and I do have, um, what, SPS sintered pads on this, so they're uh, definitely a, a more aggressive brake pad, and that's worth noting. But um, I personally, I personally do prefer that. I, I don't like, I don't like soft brakes too much. Now, I'll do another little quick one here. 100 kilometers an hour, and I'd say we were nearly up on the back wheel there. Down to 50. It stops really really well as you can see for an older bike it's actually hard to tell on this thing <laughs> how you're going because uh, it, the rear the wheel the speed center is off the rear wheel so it's sometimes hard to tell now we'll lean lean you just forward and lock you up I don't like when it moves on its of its own accord you know it, it makes me nervous is there anywhere I can tie that on to get the front brakes? I don't think so. Um, just to sh quickly show you while we're stopped, I suppose. There's the new brake discs, EBCs, and I have the same on the back. Um, you know, it it has made it has made a difference uh, in my experience. Anyway, it's made a difference to the perform the performance, uh, handling, and stuff. Um, I. I, I I don't want, I don't want to like go too mad on this but the, the handling on this bike in my opinion is so nice it handles so so lovely now the stock shock uh, which you know if you own one of these bikes you'll know it's not great this this one has the preload dialed up very high and it's quite bouncy and it's just it's just not a firm shock it doesn't uh, it doesn't do it for me anyway it's something that I will definitely be changing in the future but that said, you know, like I said, I've done two and a half thousand kilometers on it. It's not that bad. You know, it does, it does, it does a job uh, reasonably well. Not the best job that I've ever had out of a shock, but for a stock shock, it's definitely not the worst thing in the world. And the front, the, the actual, the forks are very good. I do like to feel from the front end. Um, they're fully adjustable, so you know you have compression, rebound, preload all from stock which is is nice and that's something that i will absolutely give this bike um props for because you know a lot of stuff does not come with great stock forks any anymore anyway uh, or you know in the past too i mean the cbf's stock forks are weak just in every in every which way they're weak one thing i want to just jump back to really quickly on the power and talk jesus that is not a good place to be stopping folks um, on the power and torque is 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 like the clutch and also the sound so this is on stock suspension uh, stock stock suspension it has the stock exhausts and that's the stock exhaust sound which is very quiet however what you're hearing is the induction noise and the engine noise which I actually really like and it's why I still haven't really made the decision to go all out and buy buy you know uh aftermarket exhaust because i actually do like how this sounds stock and it's a little bit more stealthy than all my other bikes all my other bikes are quite loud so having the stealth bike it's not a bad thing <laughs> for sure 
And while we're stuck in traffic, I also want to talk about the stock clutch pull, okay? So, obviously I spent quite a lot of time with it coming back from Germany, and it was very, very heavy. So it's something that, one of the things I looked up first really was, was how to kind of lighten it or how to adjust it or whatever. And everyone was, was singing the praises online of, of Oberon and their clutch lift cylinder. Um, so, I of course, went and looked at that very, very early on in this bike's life. And I bought that and a clutch line uh, from HEL. So I did change the mode at the same time. I can't tell you if just the clutch line made a bigger difference or the slave cylinder made a big difference. I did bleed the stock setup, okay? I did bleed the stock setup with completely new fluid and it was still very, very heavy. And now the clutch pull is so much lighter. It's, it's actually, I would have no complaints with that clutch now. It's absolutely fine the way it is. It's not too heavy in traffic. Um, the biting point is better. It's just all around, it's a better performing clutch. So I do want to mention that, that stock, if you're buying one of these, that stock clutch is, nah, it's not great. Or the, you know, the actual clutch pull is not great. The clutch, the physical clutch, uh, works fine. So I can't really complain about that. Um, I just wanted to jump back to that quickly and talk about it, sorry. So, you know, overall though, we'll say then on power and torque, the engine is, a, is an absolute peach. That, that, that V60 Rotax, sounds fantastic performs fantastic you know they're very reliable for a long time i've seen a lot of people with a lot of miles on these and you know if they're looked after they last a long time and i hope this one does last a long time time will tell so you know if you want to see how this one lasts just keep an eye on the channel i'm going to have this bike hopefully a long time unless someone offers me silly money in which case i'll probably have to sell it because i'm not stupid um and other than that then yeah suspension and handling I will talk about braking a little bit in a sec, but suspension and handling I think are excellent really from a stock bike. You know, you have to bear in mind my shock is 22 years old and it still performs well with my ass up on it. Um, so really and truly I think it's, it's not a bad setup stock. And I absolutely, I just, I just love how this bike you know, handles on the road every which way. It's just such a nice, it's a nice riding bike. And that is, um, I think that's hard to find a lot of the time because you have things that are like super powerful, um, you know, or super comfortable. It's, it's hard to find something that has such a nice balance like this uh, these days, modern. And I mean, this is not a modern bike. This is 22 years old. It was designed more than 22 years ago. When Aprilia, you know, they went out to Rotax and said, hey, we, wanna, we want you to build uh, this V-twin engine for us or whatever. I don't know, did Rotax offer it stock or did they build it specifically for Aprilia? Either way, they did an absolutely great job. No complaints from me, I love it. I absolutely love how it performs in this. That's one of the best parts, how it sounds. <laughs> and just how it, how it runs, it's just such a nice engine. So, aesthetics. I'm not even going to mince my words, this bike is absolutely stunning. <laughs> From this swing arm that's kind of semi-polished with the Aprilia stamped in there, it's just gorgeous. The frame is gorgeous with the Aprilia racing. I don't know if that's coming up, but whoever put that sticker on, if it doesn't, is it's unbelievable. I love, the, 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 again, that brushed, polished look. Um, the original Brembo wheels are gorgeous. I do love my addition of the EBCs, the gold center. The original ones are, are, are black centered. I don't think they look as good. The calipers look great. It, it's just such a beautiful bike. It's so nice. I, uh, usually I kind of point out things, but I think the whole thing is beautiful. I've seen these with belly pans. I actually like the semi-fared look. Um, the engine looks gorgeous. You know, the clutch, the clutch cover with the Prilia. It's just so nice. All the little touches are, are just huge. Just, you know, again over here, uh, your generator cover, Prilia. Yeah, it's just, it's just really nice. I do like it a lot. I do, I do. You know, um, the tank, I really like the lines of it. What would you call this? The cockpit area is also gorgeous. I, I was always unsure whether I like that digital speedo, but I do actually like it. Um, I think it's gorgeous out in the road. Um, obviously, the red fork caps, beautiful. And that's why I kind of added these red lines because I think they kind of just sit off that red and add to it as well. 
yeah, it's just good looking, isn't it? It's just good looking. Even all the text and stuff on the fairings, I think, really work well with it. I don't know, again, uh, did they come stock on this bike? Pretty certain this bike's been repainted at some point from red. But the, uh, the new colours work very well. Overall, it is an absolutely stunning machine. And one of the best looking bits about it is actually the mirrors. I really like how the mirrors look. A lot of mirrors are not that pretty. But these ones are, uh, these ones, in my opinion, are... Uh, one thing I actually forgot that I'll add in here. Uh, is there anything that I don't like about the bike? Um, well, like I said, the video that I made where I said the bike tried to kill me. Uh, that oil line that, that popped off because of pressure. I do think that's a bit of a design flaw. I think that's a, that is a poor failure mode that, to be honest, I don't really think would, should be left in. Obviously, you know, it's not, it's not there anymore, but it's something that should have been caught in the factory by Rotax or by Aprilia, that if your vent did get blocked, then, you know, the bike's engine default was to blow off the oil line and drench your back wheel and oil. That's, that's not a good failure mode, and I don't like that that's still there. And I'm not sure really how I can fix it forever and ever and ever. Other than to keep a very, very firm eye on it, which I'm going to do. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that I would like eventually to do something with. But we'll see, we'll see how I go about that and is it, is it possible. Um, other than that, there's really nothing that I don't like. It's a, a very easy bike to service. You know, it's easy to get to the airbox. It's easy to get the tank off. It's easy to change the spark plugs, very accessible. It's easy to change the oil. Um, it's kind of easy to get to everything. Fairings off and all, you can clean everything very well. So those are the kind of added bits that I did forget. But that's one thing I do not like is... Um oh, it just handles so well. That's one thing I do not like though, is that, that failure method of, of the oil line. It's just, uh, I don't know. I think it's a bit silly. I don't think it should be a thing. <laughs> it's kind of mental to be honest but um whoa it's a bit slippy there um, bald tarmac um but yeah no other than that there's actually really nothing else that i would say uh would detract from this bike except maybe the fuel economy i haven't measured it yet but i don't think it's very good i'll be covering that in a commuter review at some point so uh keep an eye out if you do want more information there so then we need to talk about any oh yeah any extras uh, if any on this bike and to be honest, there kind of is nothing from a, like a performance perspective. I do think one of the extras is definitely the noise. It sounds, like I said, it just sounds so, so good. Um, but you know, other than that, you don't have ABS, you don't have traction control, uh, you don't have adaptive lights, you don't have daytime running lights. You have none of that. It is, this is, is, this is, this is, this is, this is a bike. You know, you have a bike you have the manual controls of the uh, everything yourself. There's no quick shifter on this yet. There will be. That is all you get from this. Pure, unadulterated bike. And I absolutely love it. <laughs> we'll slow down here now so you can hear me again. I don't want too much wind noise. I'll let them off. I could go past them, but I won't. Um, you know, the, from the perspective of extras, <laughs> the only thing that is there is is really your screen. So the screen has a lap timer and stuff built in that you can use, that you use with the lap function over here, which is also your full light. Um, so, you know, you can use that on track and just hit the lap as you cross the line, and that is your lap timer. So you, you can use that, um, absolutely. Personally, I'd still use the, uh, the GPS and my phone that I have uh, for the track, if I bring this up on the track, um, we'll see. That's kind of it. It's just it's just kind of the extras on the screen. Now, the screen itself is um, is quite good. You know, you have you have oil or oil temperature. It is oil temperature, I think. Um, you know, you have the time of day. You have a fuel gauge warning light. Um, you have the ability to change between kilometers and miles. Um, it's it's actually quite a good screen. Uh, for the age of the bike, I, 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 I'm kind of impressed by it. Oh, or not kind of impressed by it, I am impressed by it. I, I don't think any of that stuff, I think the reason, one of the reasons I like this bike so much is it's so stripped back, it's so, 
it's so much that it's just uh, it's a bike you know what i mean it is an engine and two wheels that are driven by sprockets that have you know a brake with a line and some hydraulic fluid in there connected to some calipers that push mechanical pistons against the big disc of metal and there's nothing else going on between there there's no electronics there's nothing like that and that's one thing i actually really like about it and i'm not a technophobe i love modern bikes as well i love all the bits they have but i think something like this is just so nice it's so it's i don't i don't want to say honest or raw or anything like that but it's just it's the experience of it you know what i mean you're completely connected to the bike at all times all the inputs are yours you know what i mean and yeah it's just it's just nice and <laughs> um, one thing i do feel needs mentioning it's not really an extra or anything like that it's just other we'll file it under other uh is the gears are kind of weird so all other bikes i've ever owned there's a distinct click between gears uh, on this bike that feel is it's not that it's lacking it's just less it's a it's a much softer gear change up it's perfectly normal and clicky gearing down but gearing up it's um different i don't know i don't know in what way Re really oh no going to first gear Ugh. i don't know in what way i can say exactly but it is different whether that's a good or a bad thing um remains to be seen you know i can use the gears just fine i have no complaints about that uh, i can use the gears just fine absolutely no complaints um around the actual function of the gearbox it's just that i would like i think a more distinct click uh, up and that's that's one thing and uh, yeah that's i mean that's it if you cost wise you can pick these up in europe from anywhere between 2500 to like 5000 depending on options and condition and mileage in the uk i've seen them anywhere from three and a half to four there's, there's options there uh, in ireland they don't really come up for sale <laughs> Um, I think I've seen one uh, ever uh, for sale in Ireland and it wasn't this one <laughs> so you know it is, it is it is what it is but um, I mean that's kind of it you know there's not a whole pile else I want to say about it like first impressions wise I liked this bike when I rode it away from the shop I bought it from and at the time it had the standard Brembo discs warp and they were warped there was like no brake pads left in it they were they were pretty much gone the chain and sprockets were really old and needed change and the rear sprocket was hooked like crazy and the chain was quite shitty the rear brake pretty much didn't work um <laughs> the spark plugs were ancient and covered in oil the airbox had oil in it because it hadn't been maintained there was the wrong air filter in it um <laughs> there was all of these little bits and pieces that i've been slowly fixing and pulling together you know it was the stock clutch lines and brake lines which are now those lovely red HEL ones that hopefully you can see on camera like the only thing that i really have to do left for me to say this bike is done is the suspension but none of that was crazy money to do and after that i mean the core of the bike the engine is still absolutely fantastic and i think that is um obviously i mean it's the bulk it's the bulk of what you want is is that absolute beauty of an engine so I mean, all in all, for me, it's um, it's a wonderful bike, and I don't use the word wonderful often, but it's just what sprung into my head there. It is a wonderful bike, and I have to say, I have completely fallen in love with it. Um, I kind of hoped I wouldn't fall in love with it. I kind of hoped I'd sell it, but uh, I can't. I absolutely love it. You know, it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and we'll talk. Well, you know, we we talked about the aesthetics earlier. You know, you would have heard it earlier, but I haven't actually done that bit of the video yet. But we will, you'll see it in a second. But overall, you know, I think it's an absolutely stunning bike. It looks good standing still. It looks fast standing still, and that makes a huge difference too. And um, yeah, I absolutely love it. So first impressions, you know, if you were to if you were to go out and want to buy one of these, know that the engines are rock solid in these things. They do need to be looked after. Everything like this does need to be looked after. A lot of people overfill them with oil. Mine was over full with oil when I first got it. Um, the stock brake discs on the front do warp. Those Brembo discs, they're known to warp. But other than that, the bulk of what was wrong with this bike um, was just down to servicing and stuff. Uh, just it hadn't been maintained to the standard that I would maintain my bikes to, for instance. So that was really all that was wrong with it but it had been kept so so clean which makes a huge difference too because it's it makes it easy to invest the money to get it right and yeah 
that's kind of that's kind of it basically overall if you were thinking about buying a kind of a big twin sports tour thing for the road and you were looking at an Aprilia Falco do it I absolutely love this thing one of the only things I've left to do is change that screen because it's a bit it's a bit old and shitty looking don't know am I going to change the the exhaust to be honest anymore I actually quite like how the bike is sounding like I said it's I've been living with it a while now and it, it doesn't bother me I actually li I like how they look I like the sound of the bike and you know it's money I don't really need to spend on it I can just enjoy it you know without without it standing me too much money which there is a lot to be said for uh, one thing I did forget to mention for this video is the tires that it's on are Bridgestone S21s um, which obviously do add to the performance they are a modern sporty tire and I will never not have a sporty tire on this bike because that it needs it it hooks so nicely I mean out of the corners this thing is an animal uh, it's it is a lot of torque so especially with the 44 tooth rear sprocket and uh, you do need sticky tires yeah they're gonna wear quicker but it's better than sliding the bike across the road into a ditch so they'll all, it'll always have sticky tires on there and yeah that's kind of it so uh, if you have watched thank you very much for watching let me know um, have you ever ridden a Falco? Are you interested in a Falco? You know, what? why did you watch this video? Are you interested in a Falco after watching this video? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. I love answering them all and reading them all. It uh, gives me joy on my sad days. So uh, do let me know. And yeah, if you have any questions about any of the parts I've put on here, I didn't cover them all in videos like the chain and sprockets I've done in previous bikes, so I didn't cover that again. Um, but if you have any questions on you know bits that you've seen here that you want answered let me know in the comments as well if you want a specific video done on any bits of it uh, i can try to do that too so just just let me know let me know i am open to video ideas as always so uh yeah that's it if you watch again thank you very much for watching a special thank you as always to all of my patrons um actually patrons 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 uh, which which bike that i have now is your actually everyone <laughs> Which bike that I have now is your favourite? Which one would you take for a spin if you were to visit and uh, and I let you take one for a spin? <laughs> Which one is your favourite? I don't know what my favourite bike is anymore. I do know that I really like this one. And every time I walk into the shed at the moment, it is the one I'm kind of going towards. But I don't know, is that just because it's new or what? But time will tell, time will tell. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you again for watching. And until next time, adios. Outro crew. Outro crew. What I want you to do is go and pick a castle that you want to see that you haven't seen on the channel before and I will try my best to get there on the bikes and video it because I want to go see another castle. I always, I, I, it's weird, I gravitate towards the castles in Kilkenny when I go through videos. I just want to stop and look at one because they're awesome. So that's probably why. But yeah, thanks. Bye.